with a lot of the politicians, it's alleged, like, you know, they may or may not have, you know, relationships with lobbyists, corporations and stuff, right? So I guess there's kind of like a gray area. There's kind of like a shroud of normalcy. Yeah. But when it comes on to these South American countries, you have a lot of illegal organizations that had direct ties with their governments allegedly oh yeah so they have free reign to do whatever they want i.e um el chapo i.e yeah. pablo escobar so when you see these people coming from south uh, um the central and south america it's literally life or death so yeah i mean that's the um, thing too is like uh i mean nobody wants to talk about it i mean there's a lot of corruption in the world in general and if you are oblivious to that then you need to do a little bit more reading a little more uh, investigating on like how some of these companies are actually built and grown uh look into the financial aspects of it and i'm just not saying like uh federal government or anything is in on things like this but like there there's a reason why they investigate companies there's a reason why there's certain laws uh for documentations of the companies and things like that and i think the biggest thing is like people are fed up with all the regulations uh and they're just like yo like somebody comes up with an idea where they're like yo we can still do this legally and you can kind of like dodge these rules and regulations because for every law there's always going to be a loophole uh if we're being honest i mean the loopholes aren't necessarily there to get you away with crimes but they're essentially there to help people who are put in situations that are innocent kind of like maneuver their way out of a situation yeah. like because like if we're doing laws that are just like cut and dry there's no gray area it's like did you commit murder yes okay you're going to jail uh did you commit murder no uh well you you killed this guy so you lied on top of that like you're going to jail so then the loophole is there is like well, did you commit murder and where was it in self-defense? Yes. Okay. Well, technically you did kill that guy, but since you were defending yourself, uh, you can get away with it or you can get off and you were in the right to do this crime. So that's how you have to look at loopholes. And I mean, there's loopholes for everything in this world. I mean, and whether it's good or bad, I mean, that's up to who's ever using it. It's not necessarily none of these laws and are put in the regulations are put into play for people to just scam the system. And some of them may or may not be, but like, truthfully, it's not on the level that most common folk would be concerned about because multimillionaires are the ones coming up with these plots and schemes to kind of like yeah. keep as much money in their pockets. Um, if you talk about like how businesses are ran, um, I did a little bit of research on it and I truthfully, it's one of those things where you like, you learn more than, or you forget more than you've ever learned. Uh, mm -hmm. Because when I was trying to open up my business and everything like that with my boy, um, it was, it it's, it's a lot that goes into it because you can essentially like you see how Donald Trump has gotten out of debt every time with his businesses. Yeah. He just files bankruptcy against his businesses. So essentially that's why they tell you like, yo, your business needs to be an asset by itself and you need to be separated from it. So yeah. when that happens, your company is making all this money. Now you may drive a company car, company car that you drive on a daily basis, but essentially this car belongs to the company because the car was bought underneath the company. So then when the company goes under, you don't lose anything. You don't lose your house. You don't lose like money in your bank account. Anything that was in the business is pretty much held responsible or liable for all these things. And there's even ways to like pay sh smaller taxes and things like that, uh, yeah. because it's based off of money in your account and not necessarily money that you profit from. Because um, essentially, if you can take your profit and put it back into your business, you don't technically have that money. But if you the money you're putting into your business is a new car, a new house, a new like whatever, like if you need to buy a suit and you use the company card, like that's all underneath the company. And that's, that's one of those things that, I mean, that's business because truthfully, if 
you it's like separating separating work and play like if i'm running a business and i require a suit for a business meeting then yeah my business should cover that yeah. now yeah exactly so and that's the thing it's taxable it's something that you can like you can live an everyday life through your business and then whenever that business like defaults you can just be like well i don't really lose anything and that's what a lot of people don't realize is like a lot of these people who have successful businesses who have succeeded and failed have gone through this and known like they talked about like donald trump like uh like losing all this money following bankruptcy three four times however many times it is and he's still a millionaire he's still a billionaire like why obviously he's doing something right like yeah. obviously that was a necessary requirement for him it was just kind of like i took a chance on this and it didn't succeed so it defaulted it's i mean the thing is is like people with money don't need to use credit so that's the thing too with like people who are at like our level essentially like middle class and things like that mm -hmm. where it's like you need credit for everything and i'm yeah. moving away from that essentially because like truthfully credit is it's not it's not good i mean you end up paying more money than what the product is worth when you could just wait two years save up the money not pay any interest and be golden and then even with that being said you could even take that as a down payment put it towards the new car the new house or anything that you want and then on top of that that money that you were saving at that same point now you have more money so you can put double the payment down towards it pay off a car before the interest starts mm -hmm. accumulating things like that like there's so many ways to get around paying interest and paying all these taxes and things like that that it's just one of those things that you need to educate yourself and reading books watching podcasts um watching youtube in general we talked about it like you can learn anything you want on youtube most yep. freelance educators are on youtube right now just teaching stuff we're essentially about to start a clothing line uh we're gonna learn a lot of stuff that people have learned on youtube uh we follow a couple people on instagram who do things like that and then we just take the good and the bad and you still have to take a risk at the end of the day yeah but, it is what it is business yeah i mean that's that's just what it is i mean it may work it may not work but through the process we will learn something something mm -hmm. that will essentially make the second time around better the goal is not to have a second time around the goal is the second time around to be like all right we both have our individual clothing lines and they're going in a different direction and mm -hmm. whatever we want to do at that point like it may not be yeah. a clothing line it may be uh we might invent something like who knows like that's but yeah. that's that's a part of business so